Um, and one of the things I have discovered, because I'm now using such ridiculously large boards, um, they're almost impossible to publish properly as PDFs. So um, that's why we're keeping the boards open as much as possible, rather than sending out a PDF of the board afterwards. So if anyone, if anyone um, needs a copy of a previous board, please just let me know. So hey everybody, um, how many people do we have here so far? We've still got people joining. Uh, Adrian's now joining. 20, us. Twenty-eight. We've got twenty-eight. 28. So we'll make a we'll make a start because. There were two bits of feedback from last time, and I just wanted to very quickly address them. Um, everyone said that the we waited too long for people to join, which was one, and two, that the intros went on too long. So what we're going to do with the intros is I will choose, if there's more than 20 people, um, I will just choose 20 people based on my whim and whimsy, and we'll get those people to do the introductions. So one of the reasons that we like to do these intros and these icebreakers is so that everyone gets a chance to talk because A, that checks out that we can hear you and all of those things, but it also means if you talk at the start, you're far more likely to partake all the way through. So just bear with me here while I um, get up the participants list and choose my 20 random people. Um, I'm going to start off by introducing myself. Um, I'm Dr. J. I use they as a pronoun. Um, I'm from ThoughtWorks and I'm working as a consultant with Department for Transport. Um, and the thing that I was going to ask everybody to do is their best bus stop. My best bus stop is the London Road uh, Elephant and Castle bus stop because that's the one where I catch a bus usually into work if I'm going into any of the offices. It's the one that takes me up into the centre of Soho. So we've done the icebreaker. Um, here is a link to the board if you've not been able to get it. So if you put in that bit.ly um, piece there, B-I-T-L-Y three times two C-U-X-6, um, you should be able to join this. Um, so very quickly, I'm, those who were back here right at the very start of all of this madness of getting into NAPAN, um, we did a lot of work around the physical bus stop and the logical bus stop. And what I wanted to understand just really super quickly, I'm going to give us like a couple of minutes, is just get everybody's thoughts on what a bus stop is and what a bus stop isn't. Thinking of it as a physical object and as a logical data object as well. So what are those two things? What What is what a bus stop is and what a bus stop isn't? So just making sure that we're all in kind of agreement and getting a little bit of thoughts around it, because that's going to tie into the next stuff that we do around when you delete a bus stop, what does that actually mean? And I want us to all kind of have sh had a moment to share some thoughts about what a bus stop is and isn't. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm going to put on a timer for about three minutes. Just grab some stickies, throw some ideas up there um, and we'll head on into it. Dr. Jake, could you show the link again, please? Oh, yes, certainly. I will just scroll sideways. Thank just you. bear with me. You can see how slow my computer is running right now. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now that time's up is I'm going to read through everything and just sort them and group them. Um, if you've got any thoughts or there's any comments, just use the raise hand icon um, and I'll drag you in and I'll keep an eye on that. So starting off at the top is not the gap in the blind bend where sometimes some drivers stop and sometimes they don't. Uh, com comprised of infrastructure to denote a bus stopping point. Bollards for computer safe safety. Accessible, not too sloped. A bus stop is both on street and a digital space. We have stops that don't exist on street, such as hail and ride, or have stops that are non-physical points opposite physical stops. An agreement between operators and an ally as to a safe place to collect and deposit passengers. I like that. Does not have to have physical prof properties to be served by a bus. Used to show analytical data. Is that what it is or what it isn't? I'm slightly confused by that one. The person who did a nice round one um, used to show analytical data. 
yeah, it was an is. Oh, it's an is. I'll just, sorry, I'll just move that to the is side. Um, some bus stops are are a gate on a muddy road where the bus usually stops to pick up and drop off, totally inaccessible to disabled users. Oh, wow. Is that a bus versus a bike moment? Bus versus bike versus bollard. In the in the in the little picture that somebody's put in, I do rather like it, although not like it in in, in that way. Um, oh, there's more up here. Bus stops vary according to the environment they're set in. Sometimes they're physical stop, shelter, etc. But sometimes in that turn they're a howl and ride zone with no defined physical location. Well, others are just a nominal point, a ghost stop, which may be included due to school bus pickups or a, or a located opposite a fixed stop, i.e. a bi-directional stop. They can be a physical or non-physical place for the bus to stop. It is a place where customers wait for a bus to arrive. Can be a physical location for boarding and alighting a bus. A location where buses can stop safely so that passengers can board a light does not have to be physical hell and ride for instance a place where passengers can board and or alight a bus and is recognized by the user the operator and the highway authority usually the council i love that definition it's got it's very complete a place where a bus stops to pick up or set down it can be marked or unmarked custom and practice if an unmarked stop it can be a point of confusion for potential customers um, a transport node for connecting into and departing from the public transport network and a focal point for transport along a fixed line of route. That sounds like we're all, well, we've got slightly different views of what a bus stop is and what a bus stop isn't. We all seem relatively aligned in that it's physical, but that physicality can be something as simple as along this road, you can wave your hand at the incoming bus and it's a hail and ride section. Um, that all sounds great. Is there any thoughts or any comments on that before we move on to the next bit? Because knowing what we get rid of, knowing what it is, is really important to knowing how it becomes inactive, deleted or archived. Does this make sense? Everyone happy? Right. So what I need to get an understanding of, and this is a little bit longer, there are three things that from my very naive, innocent perspective of the world would all appear to be the same. An inactive stop, a deleted stop, and an archive stop. Now, I know that there are some things about this in the schema, but what I'd like you to do, especially give me your viewpoint on how these are different. Give me your viewpoint on what is an inactive stop, what is a deleted stop, and what is an archive stop. And what I'm really also interested in is if you're on software that doesn't allow you to do an archive stop or doesn't allow you to do something, let me know which software it is and that you can't do it because that would be really useful. Um, Gerard, I see that you've got a question. Right, can you hear me now? Because this is a third attempt, no fault of any. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, can you now be. loud and clear, Gerard. You've had enough of my voice in these meetings, I'm sure, over the past weeks. Um, Unfortunately, I can't I can't get on this um, diagram that we're actually working on at the moment. Um, that's just to let you know, but um, just uh, without preempting anybody else's um, comments. My system certainly can't distinguish between deleted, inactive and archived. I, I, I don't recall seeing the term inactive, so I'm not entirely sure what that's referring to. But it, it could be a stop with no roots attached, perhaps. Um, ah deleted is is i don't know that i'm speculating um deleted is is what i would tend to do and it's how it shows up in um ito world which would be the main viewer we would be using and i think archive again i'm, I'm not entirely sure but i think that 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 could be that the stops remain in the naptam download so if you download naptam you still see deleted stops but they're marked they're marked as archived and you can't you can't bring them back 
he might be able to bring it. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah. There may be a so, way of bringing back archive stock to not deleted ones, but so Jared, it's I'm a gonna little bit muddled. Yeah, I'm going to stop you there because when we look in the data, there's actually three different ways that a stop can be other than active. Well, there's actually a couple of active weird weirdness that I'll get to at another, I'll get to in, in, in a little bit. Um, there's a field that allows you to say whether a stop is active or inactive. And there's also a field that allows you to say whether it is deleted or archived. Now, we are just trying to figure out what your, what everyone's usage of these are. So I'm going to, I see people are beavering away. I'm going to give us about three minutes for people to throw their bits and pieces and then we'll talk it through. And Gerard, I'll take your comments and type them up when we come in, if that's okay, if you can't get on the board. Okay, thank you. No problems. Let me just run to here and set up a three minute timer. What I'll do is I'll read through the th all, all of the different pieces. Um, if you think your viewpoint's not there, just put your hand up and we'll make some comments. Um, then what I'd like us to try to do is we need to, well, I'll ask you some further questions and we'll, we'll work through this because we're trying to figure out what stops you need to see and which ones you don't need to see and which ones you would like to see and how this is going to work so that we end up with the right number of stops. Anyway, looking at in inactive stops. So these are, this is, we currently have a binary field that says whether or not a stop is active or, or inactive. So an inactive stop is a stop that is not currently served by a bus, but still exists phys physically, so could be served if an operator wishes. And then an, 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 an inactive stop has no services catering to it. It is an unserved stop. It's a stop that is physical in place, but currently has no services. A stop that is still there, but is no longer on a bus route. A stop that is maybe used for school service only or a change of route makes it inactive. I think there's two pieces there. One is schools, which we'll leave to one side. I'm going to pick that up in a couple of months time. So we'll ignore the schools thing, but um, it's, it's a change of route has made it inactive. A stop that is not in use by any service. A stop that still has a physical item on street but is not used by any service, maybe short term due to roadworks, etc., because the road is no longer served. Now that's a really good point. A stop that is still recognised by systems but not in current use. An inactive stop is a stop on the ground that is currently not served. A stop that is no longer used by a bus to arrive and depart from. Maybe a stop that is current that is not currently used but is thought it might be used in the future. A stop that was used for a short time, maybe due to a temporary diversion that is no longer required or used. So our idea of an, our notion, our collective notion of an inactive stop is a stop that buses aren't stopping at. That's physically there. It's within the data system, but it's a sign that for some reason, whether it's roadworks or just nobody cares to service that area, that it's not currently being used to, to deliver services. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, is there any, in your systems, is there anybody who can't show a bus stop as inactive? So within the different um, systems that you use, Trapeze, Diva, no, Diva is trapeze. React, Keith, you're about to tell me how React does it. No, it, uh, it wasn't that. It was just that within this, within the scheme of 2.4, which I know you're working towards, there is a validity, a validity period you can put against the stop, um, where it can be active, transferred, or suspended, and that kind of plays in that people are saying about an inactive stop isn't used. You know, you could sus suspend it under that bit of the schema. So I didn't know how that would fit in with what you were coming really. That's actually a. And who actually uses that, for instance? Uh, that's a super good point. So I'm very curious, uh, based on what Keith has just told me, is is anyone using the suspended or what was the other one suspended? Um, or... It's under the validity period of a stop, and you, it can be active, suspended, or transferred to another stop. 
So you get to say if X stop isn't working, you can go and say use this stop instead. Right. Um, is is anyone using that on this call? Is anyone using that part of 2.4? I know some of you are producing 2.4. Is anyone using that notion of suspended or transferred? Because I'll add these to my list as well. Die. Hiya. Um, not currently, but we certainly have. We had a, if we've got long term closures, we had a long term closure of the bus station and all the stops needed suspending. And we've also had long term roadworks where a bus stop's been suspended for an extended period of time. I wouldn't do it for a couple of weeks, but if it's any longer than that, then yes. Fantastic. Thanks, Di. Tansy. Um, yeah, as a general principle, we use the suspended instead of deleting stops. We generally don't remove stuff from the database, but that's just historically how it's been done. Um, so, yeah, we use the suspended feature all the time. Oh, fantastic. That's that's really good to know. I'm just going to put an extra one down here called suspended. And the other one was trans transferred. So these are in inactive but specific specific notions of inactive um so also just to give you a little bit of a notion of what we're trying to do here uh transferred um so those on the private uh on the private beta heard this the other day we're now taking the data that you provide to the current NAPTAN to current NAPTAN and we're copying that and running it through our new NAPTAN service. So we take it and we do all the data processing. And one of the things that we're doing is we're not changing any data. So we're just pulling the data across. So if you provide us something, we just pull it across. So if you're giving us 2.4 data, we're not throwing anything away. We're making sure that all of that data comes across. This has meant that we're trying to figure out some of the little inconsistencies that come up between what we're doing and what current NAPTAN does. Just trying to understand some of the data processing that current NAPTAN might be doing. And in some places we've uncovered that it's overwriting data. It's taking data that you've given and transforming it based on another field or simplifying that in, in its output. So we're just making sure that we've got a real good handle on that. Um, yes. And that's a really good question, whoever put up that one about is deletion necessary? Um, so this is what we want to understand because there's, there's a number of statuses that stops seem to be in and we're trying to understand how current NAPTAN has been handling it or not, whether they've been handling it or throwing away the data and considering it to be something else and how we should be handling it in the future. Because we want to put up the accurate data that you're giving us. Gerard. I'd be keen at Jared and then Keith. Sorry if that's the wrong way around. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, should we delete any stops at all? I think we should do because we take if we take the view that the data is there for third parties to consume and also we put it internally onto maps, it can clutter. The, I mean, I've just been doing some deletion of stops this morning, ironically, and we've got about two or three redundant stops around Piccadilly Circus. Um, and if you think about know people on apps or, or sort of websites or whatever if you can remove any sense of clutter then I think you should be doing that and we've we've got internal systems where stops are suspended or withdrawn um, but as I say we don't tend to use the suspended option we just would delete the stop it's in its entirety when it's been confirmed it's withdrawn um, but I think it's important that when it is confirmed to be withdrawn because the worst thing that can happen is that someone changes their mind and we, the stop gets restored in. Now, as long as we don't reuse the same NAPTAN code, that, that's, you know, that's fairly sort of brief work to bring it back. But it means, as I say, anybody using our data, we don't have imaginary stops and we're decluttering as much as possible. Cool. Used to declutter. I'm just trying to put that one in there. Yes, I saw the notion that Diva is not trapeze, Diva is mens. I'm having a bit of a day. Uh, Nicholas and then Natasha and then Dennis. So Nicholas first. Hello. Um, the, I think we do, there is a, a need to, to delete stops because there are going to be cases where by um, stops 
simply won't exist anymore and there's no possible way for them to come back either because say a bus station has closed or it's relocated or a junction's been modified and consequently keeping a bus stop in that location would be too dangerous um so there's always going to be a need to physically delete stops that don't and cannot exist in future um but also there's there's cases where there's just a, 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 there is no bus stop physically there anymore so for example if a, a route has been withdrawn and hasn't and the road's not been served for a considerable number of years and there's no likelihood of it ever returning the bus stops flags may have been del- physically removed the infrastructure taken out so there's no possibility of of it being used in future because it simply just doesn't exist anymore cool Uh, that's a really good point and i want to understand what the difference between then deleted and archived are and how people talk about it but we'll get to that um in a moment we'll go to natasha and then dennis and then we'll move on to talking through deleted stops so natasha Uh, Well, hello. I actually work over a number of different counties and I see a deleted stop is necessary to show because um, especially if I um, started my bus route in one county, then another, I can easily identify um, the deleted stop so I don't um, mistake the data um, due to the fact that I don't know the area. So so you're saying you need the deleted you need the deleted stops um, so that you don't accidentally route a bus through them. Is that what you're Correct. trying to say? Correct. Right, yeah. I gotcha. So so you need to see them, but know that they're not there. Yes, so like a colour or something, a yeah. different colour, yeah. I gotcha. That's a really good viewpoint. Thank you. Do you, which bus company do you work for, Natasha? I work for the County Council, so... Ah. Um, the Gloucestershire, so oh. I deal with about four different um, areas. Fantastic, right. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dennis, you're still on mute, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, one of your, uh, somebody a few moments ago did did make the same point that I was going to raise, and so far as we had a situation on the whole city culture in 2017, and a, a big area of the city centre was actually pedestrianised, where we had a, quite a few bus stops there. And as I say, they were all taken out and removed, obviously, and there is no likelihood whatsoever um, of these stops being sort of being reinstated. So therefore, they can they can be sort of lost in the system. The other thing as well is that certain services may not have routes going through them at any a particular time and may well be withdrawn but that doesn't mean to say that uh, the bus company may not wish to reintroduce that service there so we have a policy of of we might remove the pole um but we still keep the race curbs there and the, the 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 marking for the bus stops as well um and in that case what we do we just mark those stops as obsolete so we don't have any, we don't suspend stops or, or they're not called suspend or inactive. They're, ba- they're basically obsolete or deleted. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. So I'm now going to quickly read through the deleted and then make sure that we're all kind of thinking about what the what that means and see if we're in some kind of agreement. So a deleted stop is a stop that is no longer needed and is likely never to be used again. A stop that is removed, a stop that is taken out of use or removed (coughs) from a system perspective. Actually useless. I'm not sure whether that's actually useless as in the status or actually useless as in a bus stop. A stop that no longer physically exists, the status. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, no longer physically exists and will not ever be as perhaps the road network has changed or location that is now deemed too dangerous. I'm going to have to zoom in slightly. Stop data point that has been removed from the database that is no longer relevant. Stop permanently deleted from the NAPTAN system. My system cannot mark a stop as deleted or archived. Could the person who wrote that just let me know which system that you're using? That would be brilliant. 
there is no there is no longer and will never be a stop in this location again new road layer unsafe etc its deletion has been agreed by the operator the highway authority and communicated to the user I love the completeness of that. Thank you. A stop that is not in use and has been fully removed from the system with no intention of reinstating. A stop that n that need to be checked before deciding if needs to be archived. Stops that have been removed, however, some may be active again. For example, stops removed for long term roadworks. No physical stop on the street anymore. I will come to you, Keith, in a moment when I've finished reading through, if that's OK. A stop temporarily out of use may be due to roadworks. A deleted stop prevents an operator picking it up and including it in further ESBR to then be removed manually. Um, could somebody quickly r run me down what ESBR is? Oh, oh EBSR. Yes, sorry, bus service registration. Thank you very much. I knew it was an acronym I should know by now. Deleted stop is no longer on the ground and no longer served, but could be brought to back to life and made active again. It remains in the local system. An archive stop has been deleted for some time and should be removed, so I can delete it from my local systems. These can never be removed. Um, there was a note there that said about deleted being undeleted. Deleted stops used to declutter, declutter and those are running into archive stops. Is there, so Keith, I'd love to hear your thoughts, please. Now, my understanding from a deleted stop is most of them basically is a stop that is either can't be used for X reason or is desired that it's not used for X reason. Um, and, but it's the link to archive. In theory, I think my understanding was after seven years, you could request that DFT archive the stop. Um, but the process of how that was actually done was unclear about a year ago when we asked the question. Um, it might be that you do it outside of, of the software was one approach that appeared to be it and then you remove it or it was unclear whether if we marked it as archive you would then actually delete it yourselves and an archived one could be brought back by yourself um, on a case-by-case -case basis but ultimately it was you that deleted it from the master set either but yeah but it was unclear how that would actually do it on the old system but it actually worked um thank you for that that's that's really useful to find out um because i know that in the schema there's comments around if a if a stop is is deleted for so long it is automatically archived and i had no idea of who did that how that happened or anything like that so that's really good to know thank you keith let me just go through what we think an archive stop is and then i would I'm going to ask a couple of quick questions of people. So a, an archive stop, a long term inactive stop that may be reinstated at some point in the future, i.e. not fully decommissioned. An archive stop is kept for future use. It's a stop set up that was never put in place. A stop still physically exists, but not currently in use. A stop, a stop set up an error. A stop that is never coming back. Tidying up the NAPTAN database for stops that will never be reinstated, a permanent version of a deleted stop, a stop that is dangerous and needs to be completely removed from the database. It's halfway house between inactive and deleted, may be marked as such after a period of time as inactive, but could be reinstated as active. A stop not in use and no physical item is on street, may be used for seasonal services. A stop that might be used in the future, so don't want it totally deleted. An archive stop would be a stop that was in a location where there would no longer likely be a bus route again. An example would be an old bus station that has been rebuilt elsewhere and the old bus station is now a block of flats. That was going to be an example that I used. An archive stop has been deleted for some time, so it can be removed, so I can delete it from my local system. These can never be removed, reused. An archive stop is a stop that has been end dated and is no longer needed in the data. A stop that is no longer able to be served by buses but might be used again in the future. Now, I'm sensing in reading through that, there's a little bit of confusion because deleted and archived are sounding very much the same. And there's uncertainty as to whether an archive stop could be resurrected or a deleted stop could be resurrected. And I want to understand how people are thinking about these things. And this may end up becoming a little bit of a 
let's understand and let's reset and ensure everyone's working to the same thing. So uh, Nat and then Andy. Hi, so I, I left that comment there because uh, in my opinion that, um, you know, deleted means that it's just going to be deleted forever. It's never coming back. Whereas archive based on what we use like in our apps, maybe like say Google Keep, you know, there's an archive function, but you can unarchive it. But if you delete it, it's gone forever. So this is my, my point of view. Thank you. And I think that's a really good model to have a look at. Andy. Um, it's actually the exact opposite because we can mark our local stops as deleted for a temporary period of time and we can upload a deleted stop to Naptan. But once it's set to archive, it's deleted totally from our local systems and we can never restore it back from into our systems. It's arch Once it's archive, it's gone permanently. I don't know right. if anyone else's software will allow you to import it back. And I'm pretty sure that the Naptan schema will not allow you to change an archived stop to any other status. I'm pretty sure the Naptan schema says once it's archived, it is archived forever. And that Naptan ATCO code and SMS code can never be reused. So that's a really good point. So all of this, we're talking about a single ACTO code and a single SMS code referring to the same the same place, the same bus. Yes, same. Bus no, stop. not necessarily the same bus, just same the bus same stop. stop. Yeah, because Sorry, that I, stop could be moved. That stop could be moved 100 yards down the road, but resurrected on it and it used by several different other services. But if it's deleted, we can reuse it. If it's archived, we can never reuse it dead. Right. So is that everyone else's understanding that a deleted stop is out of service for now and an archive stop is out of service forever? Which is slightly different to how we do it in software, but that's OK as long as we're all of the same understanding we can document we can make it really clear for that is there anyone who disagrees with that john i was just agreeing with that <laughs> fantastic die yes i agree that's how it was set up i think initially with naptan archive archiving stops came along a lot later than the original uh, Active, inactive, deleted, whatever. By the sounds of it, Keith, because I know that. I'm not sure whether this is how it works or not, but my, my interpretation was that, let's say, a, a data uh, producer could archive it. He would then send it to DFT. The DFT would acknowledge that archive and remove it from their data set, which was a public download. But ultimately, it could be brought back out of archive um, if it was requested by the data producer with the DFT it could be done but again that's what my understanding was but I think a lot of people would like the idea of if it's archived it's gone gone and therefore you could use the ATSO code or the SMS code again because it doesn't exist anymore so it gives you more options to use if an authority has an approach of how they choose to do stops in certain areas you know you've got limited um, options available so the point of archiving, deleting, deleting gives you more options if you've got a strict uh, configuration for your acto code. Right, so I've got you. So, so, you, so you're saying deleted is kind of d deleted, but still in the database. Archived is deleted and gone, 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 gone from the database. But it could be its numbers could be reused because that previous one is gone, 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 gone. Well, that's the query. My, my, my understanding was that, you know, the, the local, the, the software that the local data producer is using might keep it as, as archived. Um, so it could be reactivated, reactivated, but the public faces stuff they download from you, it wouldn't be there no more. So if they wanted to bring it back, they'd have to request you to do an uh, exchange of archive to active again. OK, that, that's my understanding. But I get that a lot of people want archive to be gone gone so they can reuse the codes. Uh, I'm I'm going to just um, make a statement and I'm just looking at Adrian while I do this and seeing whether he will react in horror. Could we take DFT out of this notion here that we do anything around archiving? Because as far as I'm aware, I don't think we've done it for a long time if we did ever do it. Um, 
So, I, mean, I, so I was hoping you wasn't going to put me on the spot like that. Um, no, I wasn't going to put you on the spot. I was just looking for you nodding. Nodding would have been fine because I didn't want to put you on the spot. I'm fairly sure that we um, it would have been an aut uh, not an automatic process. We would have done it manually and we haven't done anything manually in a little while in that space with Naptown. So fairly confident that that hasn't happened. So 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 archived if something's marked as archived with not taken it out, but we may not have published it. And this is where things between the two system, between the old system and the new system, we're trying to get our head around. Oh God, where am I down to? Uh, Trisha and then Andy, and then we'll, I'll move my way down. Um, my systems don't have an archived option, but the archived option when it was around was that the only way we could archive stops is by special permission from the DFT and they were done by you. Um, and that's how we got rid of a lot of the stops that were stuck in reservoirs or in the North Sea to make it look tidy. Um, so, so yeah, that it's, it's, it was something that was done a long time ago. And then I've, ne I've never really asked for anything to be archived before. I just kind of inactivate everything. Um, right. Um, Tricia, can you quickly remind me which system you use? Um, we use the Trapeze Novus system. Trapeze Novus, fantastic, thank you. Uh, next person would be Andy on my list. Um, going back on that one, our software, the Diva system, you, you can't set anything to archive. We have to ask Adrian, or I used to ask Miles to archive the stops. And once he's archived them, it means I can delete them from my data set. At the moment, I've got 15,000, uh, sorry, 1,540 odd deleted stops in my in my local database, just on the maps, just taking up space that if I could archive them, it means I can, you know, they'll, they'll clear the maps up. Um, so, but that is like you say, that is a manual process that that you need to do. It used to be that I'd send an email to Miles Jackson and he would delete them manually for me. Fantastic. So that's really good to know. Um, we know that there's been a, a, a large number of handoffs recently and just trying to make sure that we understand this and also the impact that it's having because we will then look at doing something. Uh, Richard, you're next. Yeah, we, we had a situation uh, within the last few months where we actually wanted to, uh, we thought we were creating a new and unique uh, uh, ATCO reference, um, but um, it transpired that it was reusing one that had previously been archived, and we don't actually have access on our system to any of the archived stops. Um, so, uh, I, I'm not sure whether that's across, you know, that's a situation is replicated across all various systems, but that's certainly the one we have and, and we use uh, uh, Novus Trapeze's Novus system. Novus Trapeze, fantastic. Thank you, Richard. Uh, that is something that I think I've taken a note that we need to look into. Uh, Di. Hi. I back on with what Richard was saying there, but I didn't think you could reuse the stop number or the SMS code, regardless of whether it had been archived or not. But the, the argument, I believe, originally was that for historical data, it still needed to be referencing that stop and not reused to somewhere completely different. And I can't, again, trapeze no, but I can't reuse a number that's already exists in the system right I can move so, I can't reuse it so so even if trapeze even if you've deleted it from trapeze and it's archived with us you can't reuse that number because somehow there is a memory somewhere of this number being used and if you try to reuse it you get an error message if yeah I haven't actually got any archived stops but yes essentially yeah. that's what that's good to understand because that that will help us understand how it's how outside of us stuff stuff happens. Uh, Ian, I think you're next. Ian Barrett. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Third delay. Yeah, just picking this up. Yeah, my understanding, similar to others, is once you've archived them, you can't reuse it at all. And the archive functionality that we used to use was an automatic one. Is people of a, a certain age might re remember when DFT 
in Sunny Your Times gave away software and it was uh, provided by a company called Transonic. And within that database, you were able to set something to archive. And the next time you uploaded the data uh, into National da uh, Naptan, it went straight into archive. So we weren't pestering miles in order to move stuff into archive. Now that obviously the software has disappeared. I'm not sure if anybody uses it at all now, uh, but uh, on the current system, we use Omni bus systems. Yeah, you can't archive. You can, uh, you can, uh, what you can, yeah, just put them so they're not in use anymore rather than an archive. So I'm I'm beginning to feel like I've opened not just a can of worms. The can of worms is one of those boingy, springy can of worms, and there's just worms everywhere right now. Um, Keith. Yeah, following from what Ian said, there used to be an old system which was TransRT, for instance, which was some authority used, and that was the backbone of what the DFT used to use when it was done by some other company way in the back and the archiving was after seven years, there was a code to authorise it and the DFT done it automatically. But my only subtle point is, for, for the last five years, you know, no supplier such who provides an editor to the DFT, uh, to um, the local authorities, could do archiving because no one knows what the rules were the DFT was done. So it's, it's not fair to say what system doesn't do archiving because it, it couldn't do it, if you see what I mean. No, no, no. What I'm trying to understand, because somebody has left a note saying my system doesn't allow me to mark a stop as deleted or 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 archived. So I'm not casting any aspersions upon systems. This is this is quite frankly a little bit of a mess, and I'm doing my best to try and understand what's inside everyone's head, so that with the new system we at least have a chance of having it documented clearly what's inactive what's deleted and what's archived and who's responsible for making us making what what where and if it's archived can it ever be used again just making all of that as clear as possible i feel like i've opening more cans of worms every time i touch this alex Thank you. There's a particular issue with a, a set of stops for me is, is thinking about the end user. If a, if a stop is no longer served and a flag is on a, light, on a lighting column, we remove the flag. If somebody's actually on the street and they, and, and, they, and they look around, there's no physical presence of a bus stop there. They need to make a decision then whether it's still a bus route. And if they, they go onto Google, it won't show on, on Google Maps. It won't show on any app. So f uh, for the end user, there is no bus stop and they have to make a conscious decision then about making their next step on the journey planning. Mm -hmm. The stops that I have a problem with is where we can't get rid of everything physically off the street. It may be because it's too expensive. It may be because in the back of their minds it may be being used again. Or with regard to some shelters that are owned by third party advertising people who still think the stop is a very valuable advertising space. So for some for an end user, they get to what looks to them exactly what like a bus stop should look. But they go online and there's something on they go on Google Maps, they go on whatever. And according to that, there is no bus stop there. And straight away, that's where the confusion lies. Because is it is it just been not updated? Is it the fact that the, it's been missed off by somebody uploading their, their registration? And I think that for me needs to be a, a, um, a different stop in the database. So somebody, act, it, it still exists as a physical stop and somebody can click on that and on, on travel line or whatever. And it will actually say something like, something like whilst, this, whilst there's infrastructure here, this bus stop is no longer served. And that then reinforces the fact that, yeah, whilst it might look like it's somewhere they can get on a bus, it's not actually that bus stop. And I'm not quite sure where that fits in the categories, and it may need a category all of its own. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's but that's a really good thing. So so maybe we think about it um, this way, if I could propose something. I'm walking along the street, and I there are a couple of options. There is an inactive bus stop, so there's a bus stop that's physically there that's got this bus, a little sign that says this bus stop is not in service because there's roadworks down the street and I can generally make that leap of this bus stop's not in service because the road is actually dug up. That's one option. The other option is I look at an old map and I see a bus stop or a bus station. I go to where that is and it's now a block of flats or a supermarket and I can clearly see that that stop that used to exist can, is no longer physically there. Those are the two ends of the spectrums. And to me, the no longer physically there could never physically return would almost be an archive stop. 
and the other one is like an, 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 an active stop or a suspended stop or something like that. In the middle is what Alex brought up is this, is this, there's something physically there. There might be a bay on the road and some road markings, but there's no flag. There's no, there's nothing else to show me there's a bus stop. How do I know whether or not if I stand there, a bus will ever come? And that I think is a really interesting question to dig into. Is the one in the middle deleted or is deleted a, a, an, an early version of the one that where the bus station gets built over or is deleted a sub uh, part of this inactive one and the suspended one? And I think there's a huge conversation to have and being aware of the time and a little bit of the stuff that I want to do. Um, I think we should come back to that and I'll draw things out. So there's those physical ideas and we can start to label them. Does that sound like a reasonable way forward? And I'll, I'll do a little bit of try to do a little bit of thinking of what the physical is and what the logical in the in the data is and how those two things might fit together. I'm thinking right now of combining this when we talk about school buses because it's very similar in that this is a stop that is not a stop but might be a stop but how do I tell if it's just a patch of grass and on a hail and ride section and all of that complete insanity that goes on. Is everyone okay with that? I see Alex nodding, I see Tansy nodding and smiling. I see Dennis kind of nodding, so I'm thinking I'm on the right track. Fantastic. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next one. And those who were here last time will note that this looks remarkably like last time, except I've added a few new people because I'm trying to figure out who needs to know. So we're going to do some voting sessions. I'll run us through the top three individually so we all get a chance to get our heads around this voting thing and then I'll run it across. So we've got five people this time, five people. We've got Kelly who works for a local transport authority and they do the policy management level. They're, they're somebody who's involved in policy and all of that thinking around buses. We've got Rajani who manages the data. So there's somebody who is in that managing the data understanding, building the relationships with the bus operators, all of those things. We've got Jerry, who does the upload of the data from Rajani. So they are taking the spreadsheets, taking all of the data, making sure it's correct, producing the data and putting it into NAPTAN. Now, for some people in a lot of places, Kelly, Rajani and Jerry are the one person. Sometimes they're two people, sometimes they're three. So think of them as like hats or masks or roles that people are playing. Then we've got two new people. We've got Min, who's a bus operator. So Min is producing routes and planning out where their bus should go and deciding how to run a bus route. And then we've got Nikki, who is a data consumer. And what Nikki is doing is they are taking the NAPTAN data and they are building a consumer app. So they're building something like uh, City Mapper, although other mappers are, are, are available and I'm not not suggesting that that's the only one it's just the only one I can remember right now so those are the five people that we're going to look at so with those five people in mind what I'd like us to do is vote as I'm going to set up a voting session and we're just going to vote as to who should be told in of those of those five people and you'll get two votes you'll get three votes I'll actually I'll give you three votes and I'd like you to think about which of these five people Kelly, Rajani, Jerry, Min and Nikki should be told when a new bus stop is created. So you've surveyed the road, you've decided that this is a good place for a bus stop. It's going to, it's somewhere, it's a new, it's in the middle of a new subdivision. It's the right kind of place. The traffic highways people have said it's a safe place to stop and you've You've done the infrastructure and you're putting up the poles and everything. So we want to tell people when a new bus stop is there. So I'm going to run a voting session. I'm going to give everybody three votes. And this is a new bus stop. And I'm going to give everybody three votes. And I'd like you to vote when this finally goes through as to 
begin voting, please, um, as to who you think should be notified when a new bus stop is created. Um, and if you click on the wrong one and you click on it again, you can double vote on somebody. And if you put your votes in wrong, it's I think it's shift click on a Mac um, and it'll tell you what it is on a PC. Um, so the people who can't get onto the the system um, will talk about the results. And if you disagree with them, we'll we'll go through. So we've got a few people finishing up voting. See some people still voting. I know some people, so just voting on when a new stop is created. There we go. I'll just wait for the for Sindhu to finish. Sindhu, I'm guessing you're the visiting hot air balloon. There we go. So I will end the voting session. End session for everybody. So we have, let's get rid of that. So we've got Rajani, definitely needs to know. Jerry definitely needs to know. Min, the bus operator, needs to know, and Nikki needs to know. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, most of the people are saying that Min, as the bus operator, is definitely the person to tell when a new, outside of the local transport authority, when a new bus stop is created. Does this make sense to everybody? Did that kind of modelling as to who those roles are make sense to everybody in this situation? Fantastic. So. Let's move to a slightly more complicated model. So a stop is pending. So we've got everything ready. We think we know where it's going to be, but we're waiting for the highways team to sign off. So the bus operators could start to route via there, but we're just waiting for the sign off to make sure that the site is safe, that it's going to be a safe place for buses to stop. There's not going to cause any traffic accidents or anything like that. So I'm just going to start a new voting session. Start voting session and this will be pending. Three votes. So just think about who you think should be told and voting on the green stickies under the word vote. Um, thinking of who you think should be told when a stop is pending waiting on, on highway sign off. So we know that it can take some time to go through the planning situations and things like that. And again, it's those same people. So if you just vote on the green stickies, that kind of helps me, even though it's totally fine. I'll sort this out. I can go through and manually figure out where the votes have gone. Right, I've got a couple of people who've got one or two votes left. So when you're done, when those are done, I'll end the voting session. So again, we had Kelly. Rajani, Jerry, Min, and Nikki. So Nikki might need to know, but the majority of people are within the local transport authority and the bus operator. Min, the bus operator, are the people who need to know about this. Is this making sense to everybody? And very finally, so we're going to a stop that was built. We've kind of created it. It's all been signed off. Highways Authority have said yes, and it's now an active stop. So it's now a stop that you can use in your route planning and everything like that. So again, I'm just going to do a quick voting, and this will go much faster in a moment because we're going to do the ones below, but we'll just go for this one and we'll go for active. So we've got men needing to know the most with Jerry Rajani and Nikki. So men as a bus operator, and Nikki, as a data consumer, needs to know this. And then Rajani and Jerry also need to know that this change has happened. That's amazing. So with, with this model in mind, oh, let me just do that. There we go, scroll down. Um, I'm going to do a set that's going to take in all those all those one, two, three, all those four statuses below. So I'm going to give you 12 votes. And I want you to choose for each one of those different statuses who sh who who people should when people should be told. So the first one is a stop status goes from active to inactive. Don't know how, don't know where this inactive thing has come from, but goes from active to inactive. The second one is a stop status goes to deleted. So it's from uh, a, a, a stop that's active to a stop that is now deleted. When a stop goes to archived 
and when a deleted stop goes to archived. Now, this is assuming that you can go to archived without going via deleted. Is that is that middle one? So there could be something happen and the stop is just like, no, it's never going to be there ever again. It's been washed out by a flood or the road a slip has come and caved in or something like that. I live in a country where slips and, and roads, I lived in a country where slips and roads happened. Right, so across these four, I'm going to set up a voting session. I'm just going to call this chaos one. Chaos one, you'll get 12 votes. So that's four by three. Um, go ahead and vote as to who should know for these different statuses. I don't know who does the physical changes for these statuses. I want to know who needs to be told about them. Just quickly running through, making sure if there's any contentions, just put your hand up, any thoughts. So a stop status goes to an active. We think Kelly might want to know. Rajani definitely needs to know. Jerry needs to know. Min needs to know. And Nikki needs to know. So this is a stop has gone from being able to be used to one that can't be used. Any Any contentions there? Anyone think? Anyone disagree completely? So a stop status goes to deleted. So deleted means it can't be used and we're doing something with it. So we've got a couple of people talking about Kelly, Rajani, Jerry, Min and Nikki again. So it's all four of them need to know about this. A stop goes to archived. So somehow the stop is just the road, the river has changed course. The road no longer exists. The stop is not deleted. It's just gone, gone, gone. We've got maybe Kelly might want to know. Rajani and Jerry definitely need to know. Min, the bus operator, and Nikki, the uh, software developer, also need to know. And a deleted stop goes into archived. It's pretty much the same, although we want to tell Min a lot more because this is letting as far as I understand, this would be letting the bus operator know you could never go back through that, back to that bus stop again. That bus stop is just gone forever. Uh, and the same with Nikki. It, is this, do these make sense to everybody? Was there anything here that anyone felt contentious or didn't fit your mental models of what's going on? Di? I think it depends what you consider to be the process from deleted to archived. Um, I think most of the existing local authorities here, it, your stop status goes from deleted and then if you're definitely sure you don't want it, then it gets archived. But if, if you've already told your bus operator and your um, app person that it's been deleted, surely they don't need to know again, actually we have drawn the line on that one, um, it's gone. It's just sort of reiterating what's gone on previously yeah so it's far more important to let the bus operator and the and the app person know when something is deleted or made inactive than when it moves on to archived so to my mind if if, if deleted and archived mean what many of us believe it to mean um we weren't all on the same page earlier about which order things happen in yeah yeah and and i built this i built this based on there was consensus on the order, so uh, it's it's a little bit confused, and I'm well aware of that. Um, yes. Thank you. So, Nat, your thoughts? Yeah, so just to follow up on what I said, I agree. So there should be just two big categories where we talk about the bus operators, and a uh, bus operator would kind of be like an external uh, party. So when we look at all, all five people, Kelly is kind of external because uh, policy management, I, I guess. And Rajani is uh, is definitely internal, together with Jerry. These two definitely work uh, hand in hand. And Nikki is also external. So when we categorize them into external and internal, we kind of know who needs to know more and who needs to know less. And uh, when it's deleted, archived, or, or say um, some other status, uh, it will still be unusable in, in a way so that's the big that's the broad category that i would maybe say comes under inactive to to uh to the to the user of of that data and i'm also quite curious that kelly uh isn't really getting much love so i, I thought <laughs> if anyone have anything to add about the policy management side yeah 
I, I think it's part of, there was a conversation previously where we used those three layers of, of internal roles within local transport authorities. We created them as people, even though for most people, they're effectively hats that one person is wearing. Um, Nicholas, your thoughts would be great, please. Um, yeah, it was just in relation to the, um, uh, the third parties needing to know. Um, my only uh, notion really was was not so much a third party building their own independent apps or information, but it would also be those that produce systems that power um, sort of an operator system. We use Passenger for our um, websites and apps, and they that their their stop database is is built up from the Natan database. So it, whether they know, need to know directly or if it's just by way of the automated updates, they will still need to know somehow that stops have been added in because they will then flow through to their back office systems. Because if, if not, um, if we've added in a stop manually, for example, in Omnimap, um, when we've been uh, notified or consulted with a local authority and then we try to add that add the details for that service in with that new stop added it can throw up errors because it's it's picking up a stop that according to it according to the back office doesn't know exists so so your your issue there is sometimes the the that third party isn't just uh, consumer apps, it's also what we've called ecosystem apps. And those are the ones for like the bus operators, but also for local authorities themselves and, and other local authorities to know where bus stops are around the country. Is yeah. that right? Cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, I think I touch on that in the next piece. So I'm just going to pop on and ask the next piece just to kind of keep us on track for once. Uh, as my timekeeping was uh, fed back on last time. Um, so what I what I want to do, and this is, these are four, and thinking of stop CSV, so not thinking of anything else, thinking of stop CSV. I want you, I, I would like people just to quickly give me an idea, just with some stickies, as to how useful stop stop CSV would, it, would be if it was stops including deleted stops, stops including archive stops, stops with only active stops. So anything that's inactive is just isn't reported and all stops and all statuses. And I think there's one there which should be stops including archived and deleted, uh, which I think is all stops and all statuses. So if you could just put a sticky or something there and say this one's useful, this one's not. We'll just take a couple of minutes to have a think because what I'm trying to understand is if we need to include these statuses, are they going to be really useful to you? And I'm also going to then ask another Trixie question. Would you want them all the time? Do you only need the archive stops once in a blue moon just to make sure that your that your archive stops are your archive stops do you need the deleted stops all the time and just trying to understand whether or not there's a piece there that we need to investigate a little bit more as to what data we can give you and i'm also aware that there will be some some quite big differences um, as across people so I will try and dive into that just a little bit. So what I was thinking of when I thought of this in the back of my mind was if you wanted to download a particular local authority um, to get the stop CSV for them, would any of these different extra pieces be useful? And which would be the most useful? OK, so what I'm going to do is clear out a couple of these empty ones so I can see the ones underneath. My apologies if I'm deleting your, hopefully I'm not deleting anyone's work. Um, so stops including deleted. So this is 
all stops, including stops that would be in the status deleted, which is that kind of middle road between being inactive for some reason and physically dead, physically not there. Um, useful, useful, occasionally useful, prefer to have them and then filter them out. Useful, useful, somewhat useful, not required, useful for data manager. So somebody like Rajani would find them useful to keep their systems updated, but it's not. And we, it looks like that's a useful thing to have, although some people are like, I want to filter them out. So that's something that I want to think about. Stops including archived. Not useful, not useful or as a separate file. Archive should be a separate file. Not useful, not useful, not useful. Somebody thinks they're useful. I'm interested in understanding that. Useful for stop owner, e.g. highway authority, third party advertising agency and the bus operator. So useful to know what stops are no longer in NAPTAN and not required. So to me, this almost sounds like the archive stops would be better presented as here is a way of getting just the archive stops for a space. I'm seeing Alex nodding, not nodding vaguely. What do people think of that idea? Di. I almost think it's again where we're not quite agreeing on what a deleted and what an archived stop actually is. Yeah. That, that's what that suggests to me. Yeah, no, and and I, I, I see that I, I'm thinking of some ideas here, um, but we need to go away. And like I said, when I do the bus um, stops, we were going to do, no, about school stops, um, I'll bring in all of these archives and delete it and actually have some really well, well, I'll have some well thought out ideas by then. I, I'm not saying that I think things out. Um, only active stops. Useful, useful, very useful all the time. Useful for other authorities. Not useful at all. Downstream users, operators and app operators will not know about deleted stops. Useful, useful, not very useful, not useful. Useful for anyone dealing with end user data, useful. So there's quite a mixed bag there about whether knowing only the active stops is useful. And is that because you also need to know where the bus can't stop? So there might be a post or there might be a pole that's got suspended on and you need to tell somebody, I'm sorry, the bus will never stop there. Is that why it's not useful? Did I understand that correctly? Yeah, I think it just depends on what context in which you're using it. I mean, from my perspective, just having active stops would be extremely unhelpful because I need to see where all the suspended stops are as well in case I need to use any of those and reactivate them. I need to have, I need to see everything really from a data management perspective, but an operator probably doesn't need to know that. So again, it, it all comes down to the context in which you're using this data. Yeah, and I think that's a really interesting point. Um, is there is there anyone who's a bus operator still on the call? Would you find it more useful just to get the active stops, or is getting some of the deleted stops as useful as, as knowing where you don't currently stop is as useful as knowing where you do currently stop? No problems. I think I need to build this one out a little bit more. So all stops with all statuses we get. So this is including active and archive stops. This would be helpful. Not sure as archive should never be used by downstream systems. CSV split into different tabs, active, inactive, deleted, archived, etc. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Sometimes useful. Sometimes useful though whether we should need to know about other authorities archive data, how useful would that be? Sometimes useful, the most useful, occasionally useful, useful to data manager, this would be my preferred option was it ensure our systems are up to date would only need for appropriate areas if possible rather than the entire country. Yes, yeah, so so this is the flavor of how we deliver things. So this has really given me some food for thought here. I have no answers right now and I know that I keep saying that I'll come back to this, but we'll come back to this when we do the school stops for the moment. We're just the people who are on the private beta. 
we're going to make some decisions. We'll tell you what decisions we make and we'll see how we end up. And if we make the wrong decision, we'll do it in a way that we can easily pivot back and unmake it. Hiding or showing something from it from a different status is not the end of the world. It's not something that that we're not throwing away data or, or, or anything like that. So moving along, what I wanted to go through is just run you through the scope and the plan of where we are now and just making sure that everyone is kept up to date with this so that you're all aware of what we're thinking, what's coming up and what other questions I'm going to be rabbiting on and asking you about. So Horizon 1, so we're breaking it into Horizons. Horizon 1 is what we're working on now. Horizon 2 is a little bit in the future, about 12, 18 months maybe in time frame, and Horizon 3 is our, is our grand goal. So Horizon 3, which you've all possibly seen, is a wonderful goal of there's data producers and they have this wonderful system with APIs and this ability to put in data really easily. And all of these open data sets held by DFT all talk to each other and they all intermingle and there's a single identity management system in the middle and there's a joined up policy group and operations group and support group at DFT that talk to each other and do things in concert and the data consumers, people who need to take the data out of the system are easily able to take it out, not just using a web interface, but also using APIs if appropriate and are able to put this into their apps. And the goal of all of this, the grand scheme behind all of this is to increase public transport usage, getting people out of their own cars and onto public transport and using it and, and just having people want to use public transport. So moving backwards, where are we now? We're currently, we've built a version that can download where you can download NAPTAN. So you can download NAPTAN data. So what we're doing is we're taking data from the current system, copying it down to our system, so whatever you upload to current NAPTAN, we're also taking into our system and processing it. And we've now in the process of building a private, well, we're in the process of releasing a private beta that will allow people to come on and start to use data that's run through our processing. There's a number of people on this call who are who are on that. And at the moment, we're keeping it locked off to a small group because we want to try people to see what big what what mistakes we've made, what red flags we need to go fix. And once we've got that done, we'll start to widen out that private beta set until we're at the point where we can open it to everybody. In the meantime, as well as doing that, we've got some work underway around identity and verification and authentication about building permissions. Um, we've got an idea about upload and we're splitting this into giving you feedback about the data being processed by us and also you being able to upload a file into us. We've kind of split that bit into two parts. And what we're trying to do is build out to a private beta where both systems are, are running. So you'll be able to use the new system, but at any point in time, you could go back and use the old system should you should there be something that, that we're not yet providing. We're then looking at what we need to do next, what will bring in the biggest value. So we know that there are some things we can do that will not need schema changes. Not even little schema tweaks will not need schema changes. And this is around some of the data quality and the business rules, although trying to get our heads around what business rules of the 130 that are out there should be in there. We don't need a schema change to create an API if anyone wants it. We shouldn't need a schema change to switch off the old site. We shouldn't need a schema change to do some sort of mapping of what the stops are so you can visualize where your stops are and see where we think they are and we can find I think it was die had the wandering stop we can show you that your stop has gone on holiday um, and is no longer in the center of leads um, we also need to look at whether how we move nubtig whether we keep nubtig or well keeping nubtig would Removing NubTig will require a schema change, but we need to look at how we move NubTig across the systems. And we also need to look at fixing the data and the nine series data. Those who have been dealing with us know that trying to get a train station or a metro station or anything in at the moment is a little bit tricky. And we're spending a little bit of time trying to do it. Adrian's looking very pained, but everyone's been on these emails. 
Um, so we're trying to look at, can we make that a lot smoother? And then there's a pile of things that we need a schema change to un unlock, which is getting funding for a schema change. If we want everyone to be on 2.4, your software needs to also be able to support 2.4. And if your software doesn't support 2.4, how do we help you get reach that point? What are the accessibility standards um, and how should we record them? Because accessibility standards recorded in 2.5. Um, fixing the school stops, adding new transport modes, um, zip the e-scooters, e-bikes, all those different types of transport adding rail accessibility data, adding new bus stop information. So if you want to show if a bus stop's got real time information or anything like that, removing the fields that are no longer useful, like clear down codes, because that technology died a few years ago. Um, having fuel, dual language support. So uh, Tansy could have both English and Welsh language for, for a stop. Currently, NAPTAN only allows one or t'other. It doesn't allow you to have both. So how would we how would we look at that? Enhance non bus stop data. So <laughs> what's the other data that needs needs to be in there? Should we use unique street reference numbers, which is USRNs, um, to make it much much clearer which street a bus stop is on? Is that going to solve a problem? Um, improving plus bus and how we display plus bus zones and improving and making sure all the accessible information regulations are there. So that's the sort of stuff that we think will need a lot more, a lot of schema changes to make happen, which will then feed on into this. Um, is there any questions? John, you've got a question. Yeah, it's about the accessibility uh, standards in I don't know if you've noticed in the national bus strategy that they mention accessibility data at bus stops and how, how it should be provided for app uh, suppliers. And I was wondering, have you got a timeline when we're going to be able to get this into this nap tunnel? I mean, I'm guessing 2.5 is dead and buried, is it? Um, that's some of what Adrian and I are currently working on. I'm not going to throw Adrian under under the oncoming bus and say, can you give us a time? Because this is the stuff that that we're because it's in the in the bus strategy, we're needing to figure out and and get how would we do this thing? You've told us to do the thing. We want to do the thing. The current system doesn't allow it. We're going to need to do it. How do we fund this? Adrian, do you, is there any other thoughts on that? Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly not coming soon. Um, that's that's I, I, I don't want to. I, I, I don't know if that's reassuring or not, but we're not going to suddenly ask you to do something this year on accessibility. Um, I've been thinking about this today, to be honest. I think my preference is that we have some a, a more multimodal approach across the department for how we capture accessibility data so that we we have some some consistency across the different industries rather than trying to look at it from a sort of a bus point of view than a rail point of view and having different things and so behind the scenes we, we're trying to raise that up the sort of agenda within the department to try and uh, get get some sort of momentum behind that as an as a concept as opposed to um, the single mode approach the rail team currently doing an enormous assessment of um, rail station accessibility data and we're talking to that team to see how we can um, learn from them and perhaps work together with them. I do think 2.5 is probably dead and buried but we don't want to rule anything out at this point but it's not we're not actively trying to implement 2.5 at this point and working towards that as a goal. I my goal right now is to get you all on the new system um, and eventually get you all using the same schema because that's going to make it so much easier to then move you to the next thing because we know that some people are still on 2.1 and we want to find out what we can do to help you get up to 2.4 um, even if it's and and what that what that cost is going to be for local authorities because I know that it changes a little bit of the data and if your software doesn't allow it we need to look into that. Sorry, um, so sorry, just stepping yep. back a little bit. So from in regards to the bus strategy improvement plans that local authorities have to put forward, do we just state at the moment that we're unable to put accessibility data 
are unable to provide accessibility data to app providers due to the limitations of the current NAPTAN schema. And this um, is being looked at from a central point. John, sorry, it's Keith. I would say that there are suppliers out there that can do it, and there are suppliers that will actually uh, embed it with a data set, and you can tell people to use it. But the point is that no one really knows what standard that has to be. So you can only do an internal one until the DFT decide what a national one is. Right. But that's my view and understanding. So, so, and I think that's something that Adrian and I need to take as a viewpoint off to the policy team and get them to come back with something from from DFT. And this is not me passing the buck. This is me saying it's above my pay grade to provide an answer right now. Let me go and find out. It's very much like the question that came up last time around what's who's legally responsible should something happen at a bus stop. I'm raising that at the SRO board in a couple of weeks' time to go and get somebody to help us find out the information because that's kind of one of those crucial little questions as well. Does that help everybody? Um, Andy. Uh, I think most of our systems does already do um, some kind of accessibility. I know all of our the DV, the DV users have got full accessibility and full accessible journey planning options in our apps and our website. Uh, and we can store accessible data in all of our stops and routes. It's just whether we, at the moment, we can't export that into our NAPTAN or uh, any standard. So when you're doing this and coming up with your, your standard, please make sure you speak to us because we already do it. We don't want to change everything we've already done to fit a new standard. Oh, Andy. I speak to you. I will speak to you. I, I know promise. You yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> we are not going to do something by fiat and just go and say or announce that we're going to do it this way without talking to you all. This is why I've been building up this model of talking to everybody as much as possible. Um, but yeah, thank you. I think that's a really, really good point, especially if a lot of the software already does it. And it's just that NAPTAN can't, can't hold it. That puts the problem in very firmly in, in our court to find a solution so you can give it to us. Um, in the last kind of five, 10 minutes, what I'd like you to do is looking at the scope and plan, take a few minutes to think about it and give us your feedback on how that feels for you um, what what gives you joy, what's good and useful in what we've presented there, what frustrates you, um, what's not good or not or not useful, and what makes you sad? What are things that are missing that should be happening? Um, and then if you've got any questions or anything like that, there's mine and Adrian's contact details. Um, I know most of you receive emails from us on us from us on a regular basis. So um, feel free to drop either of us a line um, and just let us know if there's any other thoughts that you've got or any any questions, but it'd be really, really good to grab your feedback there. And I also just want to say thank you everybody for taking part today. I know it's been a very hot afternoon. I'm sweltering away here besides my window. Um, I know it's been a long two hours or it's been a fast two hours, a brisk two hours. Um, and just thank everyone for taking part staying focused and and um, I really really appreciate your feedback your thoughts and your comments they make a really big difference um so in terms of next steps uh I've lost so just to let you know what's coming up this was archived and deleted equals unwanted <laughs> we uh we will <laughs> There will be a repeat of, uh, not a repeat, but we'll, we'll we'll go deeper into this one. In July, I've got some sessions to be booked in. With our, I'm sorry, David. Um, so in July, we've got a session about naming. I'm expecting this to be as big a can of worms, possibly even more so than archived and deleted. And I will prepare myself with my fishing trousers and worm hunters. Um, then we're also going to talk mapping, which I believe will also be a can of worms. And then in August, um, I want to talk migration planning because hopefully by then we will have had the public be the private beta running for at least six weeks, possibly eight to ten weeks. So we'll be able to talk that through. And I also I've got a thing penciled in for school buses. There'll also be bits around archived and deleted that that would come in there. Um, 
is hopefully this communication plan makes sense to people. If there's anything that you're like, actually, could you bring this? You should bring this session forward. Um, this we need to repeat a session on this. That would be really great. We also need to do a little bit of a, another session on the notion of responsible but we're kind of skating past that at the moment. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, I mean, I, I kind of opened a can of worms myself too. So I, I was just wondering, you know, uh, some of them mentioned that their systems do not support the the uh, archived or deleted flags, so maybe th they could have another session on these so uh, they could work it out among themselves. Yeah. Yeah, um, what, I, what I'm thinking of is using the, the, the session where we talk about school buses and the problem, the problem of school bus stops and school bus routes um, will include a wrap up of archived and deleted in there, um, if that makes sense to everybody. And in fact, I'm just going to quickly duplicate that and put those two together so that um, there's a part two. And hopefully I will have some ideas and some something more concrete to talk through so that everyone can say, yes, this model makes sense. No, this model doesn't make sense. This model will work. This model won't work by then. Um, so we've got about five minutes left.